I'm trying to find the best angle when it comes to recording these videos. I think here is probably best. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and cover five tips when it comes to keeping Plipter slash Biker slash Bashir, however you want to call it. We're going to go ahead and cover that today. But I got five tips written down right here, so hopefully we can go over them pretty quickly and you guys can be along your way. So the first tip is substrate and tank decorations. So when it comes to substrate, I used to be a pure bare bottom aquarist. I used to keep fish in bare bottom aquariums, completely bare, no decorations, nothing. But over time, I realized that substrate does affect the biker's colors drastically with like contrast and patterns and stuff. I went ahead and shifted my focus from bare bottom to adding sand. And when it comes to adding sand for your bikers and lifters and stuff, the main one that always pops up is garnet. And the reason for this is because it's red slash purple slash pink or whatever you want to call it. It's that color that makes the bikers contrast pop. So when you put bikers in the tank with black sand or black substrate, the colors get really, really dark. Uh, in the case of my laps, uh, they got extremely dark lost patterns, even my Enlis. Um, they just lost their color and it just got not washed out. I guess it's like the opposite of being washed out Speaking of washed out when I had them on bare bottom They were they were really washed out like all the patterns were pretty much gone and my laps ended up looking like Senegals Not that Senegals are bad, but I mean I got the laps for their colors and patterns and stuff So eventually I talked to one of my buddies and he mentioned that he used Garnet and when he said he uses Garnet He actually got me some Garnet so I ended up putting that into the tank and all the fish changed drastically especially in my laps. So before I had the substrate in there, my laps had barely any patterns showing and stuff. They were looking good, but they weren't looking at their best. And then also when it comes to my wild caught, this guy right here changed drastically. Patterns started showing, popping everything. And yeah, Garnet is one of the ones that I recommend. 100%. So when it comes to decorations in your tank, I personally don't keep any decorations like wood, rocks and stuff, especially if you're going to stack them. If you have bikers in your tank, you, you'll realize that, you know, they sometimes they spaz out, they're like little missiles. And if you have like rocks stacked up, especially in a glass tank, if your biker hits that pile and that rock pile falls over or something, something might crack or something might break. So keep that in mind. So the next thing is hierarchy. You'll notice that whenever you pick up like two bikers or three bikers, uh, when they're young, they won't fight. But when they get older, you're, you'll start seeing nipping and stuff, especially from ornates and lees. You'll start to see a lot of that aggression. I've heard a lot of stories about ornates attacking other bikers and non-stop taking on them and stuff. That could be an ornate thing. That's kind of like similar to the Jardini of the Arowanas. How Jardinis are very aggressive. But when it comes to biker hierarchy, usually this happens when you add in I don't know, four or more bikers will start to attack each other and nip each other and stuff. The attacks aren't usually as crazy as other fish attacking each other. They're pretty much just kind of developing their hierarchy, developing their their like pack and stuff. So once everything's kind of settled, usually, usually they won't fight. They'll have an alpha and then everyone underneath the alpha. Kind of like a pecking order. The worst thing that ever happened to my bikers developing the hierarchy was just fin damage and stuff, but you can take care of all of that with clean water. You barely ever need to add like medication and stuff when it comes to like biker fins healing up. Just keep the water as clean as possible, do your water changes, and they should be good to go. So like I mentioned in the first tip, you could add live plants in there or like decoration stuff to break the line of sight, but there's always like a little give or take cost, right? If you add decorations, it's more opportunities for the biker to hurt themselves when they spaz, but at the same time, gives the bikers places to hide. So it's up to you, your tank, um, add whatever decorations you need, but that's pretty much how I would view decorations in a biker tank. So the third tip is feeding. I've covered this in my 14 month video for my bikers. I'll go ahead and leave it up like here, or is it here, somewhere here? But in this video, I pretty much go over what I fed my bikers throughout the time of me keeping them from baby all the way till, I don't know, I think it was like six months ago. I fed them a lot of tilapia pieces, frozen market shrimp. I would even squeeze the air out of like freeze dried krill so they could sink and then the, the bikers would eat that there. But their main diet was frozen or thawed tilapia pieces and market shrimp. When they were juveniles, that's when I started getting them onto pellets. So it wasn't until they were about 10 to 11 inches, that's when I started feeding like more complicated seafoods like glassfish, smelt, calamari, clams, mussels. But one of the main foods that I've always stayed away from was salmon. And the reason why I stayed away from that is because one, a lot of people said that it's bad for it. Red meat fish is like more fatty and stuff. But yeah, all I know is it's bad for your water quality. Maybe one day we'll try it, but as of right now, 
probably stay away from it. The thing is, I didn't feed any live fish to my breakers because they were so slow and they would pretty much eat them at night. So um, I, back then I used to breed a lot of guppies. There was some that I needed a cull. So I tried feeding the cull ones to my bikers and I would never see them eat it anyway. So I, I, but that's why I stopped. The only time that I've successfully fed live foods to my bikers was live ghost shrimp and night crawlers. Live ghost shrimp was pretty fun because you can see the like the ghost shrimp kind of like roam around the tank and stuff. But again, like I said, they only ate them at night when I was sleeping or when the, all the lights were out. And then when I went ahead and fed the night crawlers, it was a whole different story. They were eating them in the daytime and stuff. I can see them. I were even recorded a video. Adding more of a variety to their diet is good for them. So adding in some night crawlers is a, it's a good look. One last thing that I wanted to cover when it comes to feeding is they're very, very messy when it comes to feeding them things like pellets or food that disintegrates over while they're chewing and stuff. Uh, if the food bits on the floor is too small, um, they, they won't even pay attention to it. So they just leave it there. So just a reminder when you're feeding them, they're gonna be really messy and you might wanna look into a fish that picks up their scraps. Speaking of fish that picks up their scraps, the next tip is tank mates. So when it comes to adding in tank mates for your bikers, just remember that your bikers are very polite. They're one of the most polite predatory fish that you can actually get. Uh, they're very slow eaters. They take their time, and if you have a fish like an Oscar or a Flowerhorn or something, they're gonna eat all of their food before they even have a chance. My bikers will literally stare at a pellet for like five minutes and then decide to eat it. It's like they're thinking about it. Like bikers are one of the slowest eating predators I've ever had. So when it comes to the size and type of tank made for your fish, just remember that those like the small and slender fish, they will get hunted at night, they will die. If you even have a slight thought of your bikers maybe eating that fish that you're trying to add into that tank, it's probably gonna eat it. And the last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to tank mates is plecos. Plecos, plecos, plecos. Everyone always talks about them. Don't keep plecos with your bikers. They end up developing a taste for the biker's slime coat. Um, they can attack them overnight. I've seen one of my plecos attack and kill one of my old ranchos, one of my expensive ranchos. And honestly, ever since that day, I stopped keeping plecos. I personally never had an issue with the biker and pleco because I never kept them together. But from all the stories on MFK, all the stories in the forums, other forums and whatever, they everyone says don't keep plecos with bikers, so I would just listen to them. Honestly, just stay away from plecos, no matter how safe someone says it is. It, it's unpredictable. I mean, I had a bristle nose, man. I had a bristle nose and it killed one of my ranchers. Horrible, it's horrible. And the last tip is tank preparation. So first thing when it comes to tank preparation is keep all of your equipment off the bottom of your tank. So when it comes to preparing tanks and keeping equipment in tanks, I usually put heaters towards the bottom of the aquarium because heat rises and this will be an effective way for it to distribute heat. But for my biker tanks, I keep all the heaters on the walls. And the reason for this is because with the heaters off the bottom, there'll be less risk and less chance of the bikers crashing into them when they spaz out, breaking your heaters, causing issues and stuff. I'd rather just keep it up on the wall, keep it out of the way, allow them as much space as possible as a poly pile. And the next tip is to ensure all of your filtration pipes, like your inlets and outlets are locked down and secured tightly and stuff because you don't want your biker to knock it out of the tank. If it knocks the inlet pipe out, it'll pretty much drain your tank. If it knocks your outlet pipe out, it'll over flood your tank. Over flood, overfill your tank, one of the two. But just keep those secure and you should be good. So the last and most important tip when it comes to tank preparation for your bikers is secure those lids. So before I had this group of bikers right here, I had a Jardini Arowana. I prepared my tank for that Arowana and made jump proof lids on top of my acrylic tank. This involved like the egg crates, zip tying them, drilling them into the lid of the tank or the top of the tank and securing them with Velcro straps. This is a way that I ensured that my arowana won't jump out of the tank and uh, I've used this lid ever since. Sure, I modified this along the way, but honestly, you just gotta find a way to secure your lid because any little hole in your tank, there's a high chance of your biker just kind of jumping straight out of the tank. And the reason why I say this is because bikers come up to the surface for air. When they come up to the surface, something might scare them. And if something does scare them, they're just gonna continue to bolt upwards and out of your tank. I've lost two Dells in the past from um, loose lids and like little, leaving little holes in the back of the aquarium. It was just bad news. Keep all your lids and holes secure. I take locking down my lids so seriously, pretty much strap down my lids to the aquarium. You don't have to do this, this is kind of like overkill, but honestly, um, 
I just do it. Lid preparation is the most important when it comes to preparing the tank for your bikers. So that's it for today's video. It went a little bit longer than I expected, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it and you guys can apply these tips and tricks when you're keeping collectors in your aquariums. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next one and peace guys.